Hey friends, welcome back. In this session, it's going to be a very interesting as well as some very informative content that will come out in this session. We are going to learn how do we track ISS, that is International Space Station, with a piece of Python code. Also, we will learn the usage of APIs. I am going to use APIs with Python and it's really very interesting as well as simple and this session will get you both these inputs. We will get the data from the International Space Station and we will also know how to use the API. Well, how do we call the APIs in Python? Is it very difficult? No, not at all. It's very simple. What is an API? We know that it's an interface or a connection between the computers and or you can call it as computer programs. So I'm going to use this APIs to get some data. I'll request and I'll get some response and it's as simple as that. I'll push a get request and I'll get the response data as well as the response code. It's very simple. So I have got this API as a facilitator for me to retrieve information. That's how I can conclude it in an easier way. Well, before we go ahead and implement the data retrieval process, I mean, we are going to access something and we are going to get the data from ISS. And how do we do that? Before we do that, we need to go ahead with certain prerequisites met. The first one is very simple. We need to go ahead with pip install request, pip install JSON lib. This, this will support you in JSON operations pip install turtle, this will help you in the design and the imaging process, pip install urlib3, this will help you in fetching the urls, pip install times. We need to install all these properly and I am sure this will be very helpful for you. Well, so which is that API that we are going to use? We are going to use the APIs called as open APIs from space. So where do we get the information about it? So yes, you have got a lot of information about it online and you can go to the official website opennotify.org. What is it? This open notify is an open source project which will provide very simple APIs for accessing some of the NASA's data. We are going to access some of the very nice data which include the current location of the International Space Station. We are going to identify how many people are sitting in the International Space Station as of now. All these through simple APIs you are going to access and this is really very simple. I'm telling you it's really very easy. Now how do we do it? They have got some details here and you can see that the ISS is currently over, the location details are here and it's quickly changing, you could see that here, it's running at a very high speed, it's moving at a very high speed and that's why it's changing so fast. It's moving at close to 28,000 kilometers per hour, so it's real high speed. So it changes so fast and that data is getting reflected here. We have the simple API that will get you the location details of the ISS and the complete procedure is provided here. I request you to go through it whenever you have time. This is one part of it. Now, how do we get the data about the people in the space? This API will return the current number of humans sitting in the space station and it is very simple and this API, just like the previous one that we have seen, will not take any inputs. Very simple, they don't want any inputs but they will give you the response nicely as in how many people are sitting. Now, I request you to go through this website whenever you have time. This has got source code details available as well and you can take it all from Git. You can see that I am redirected to Git. The complete code base is available here and this is a pretty simple process and I think you can definitely love it when you start seeing it. Well, can we code it now? Yes, it's time for coding and I'm going to show you how exactly we can code it. First step, we are going to track the number of astronauts sitting in the space station. I need to know how many astronauts are sitting in the space station and for that to be done, I need to import all these. Import JSON, import turtle, urlib.request, time, and import web browser. I have installed the prerequisites for all these, so I will not have any issues right now. Now, what is the URL? They have very clearly specified that in this link, if you see, they have clearly specified to get the number of people in the space, you need to use this URL, where this is nothing but the link. We are going to use this, and this is the URL link right now for you, http api.opennotify.org slash astros.json. Now, what are we going to do? We are going to get the response for url lib dot request dot url open dot url. Now what do we do? We request. Now what is the result? We will get a response and the response is presented here and you could see that the result is printed and it comes out in this format which is very easy for you to understand and the names of the uh, scientists over there, astronauts over there and which space station do they belong to, all these details are clearly presented here and I am going to run it for you. So I'm running it now and I got it. So this is the request versus response process and this is very simple and what we are doing is only we use this. As simple as that, right? Now the next one is going to be pretty interesting. 
I need to get the lat and the long details. So how do we do that? Again, they have specified very clearly that which is the link that we got to use. So you can see that here, this is the one that we have to use and I have used the same thing here. Similarly, we need to push a response request and it gets you the response. I am formatting it in the way I want with the lat and the long details being printed in the float format very clearly for me to visualize how exactly it looks like and when I run it, I get the data. All these are real time and this is very nice. I am telling you, this is very easy for somebody to do and most importantly, please learn. In case you get some errors, you can go through the response codes because the response codes will let you know what exactly you are up to when your code is run. For example, 400 you must be very familiar with. Bad request. 401 unauthorized, 403 forbidden, 404 not found. So all these codes are there for your reference and 200, 201 are okay and created. 400 to 405 that tells you that it is unauthorized, forbidden, not found, bad request, method not allowed, etc. So 500 and 503 they talk about the internal service server error and service unavailable. So you can go through this as well for you to get a clear idea about what is what. I hope the session was useful. Give it a try and definitely you will love it. And in case you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me that in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer. And if you like the channel, the content, kindly subscribe. Thank you.